What is going on everyone? My name is KKC and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video we are mixing things up a bit and bringing you something different. We are going to be ranking every Call of Duty that's ever been released in a tier system. So guys I've been playing Call of Duty since about Call of Duty 2, Call of Duty 3. I've played the game a lot, I know a fair bit about the game and I'm very very excited to be ranking these games in this tier list today so guys if you like this kind of stuff make sure to drop a like on it down below so i know that you've enjoyed it i'm going to be doing this in chronological order so the more recent relevant call of duties will be towards the end i'll be rating warzone black ops cold war modern warfare they will be towards the end so make sure to stay tuned until then let me know your thoughts let me know your rankings down in the comments as well i'd love to see what you guys think and on the topic of staying tuned as always feel free to subscribe to the channel for all of the latest call of duty news tips and tricks how to's class setups and much more let's press x to start and rank every call of duty that's ever been released so guys here we go the year is 2003 and infinity ward released the first installment of the call of duty franchise call of duty the original one now in 2003 i would have been probably seven probably seven or eight years old so i can put my hands up and say i haven't played the original call of duty but it looks pretty good it's got some good reviews and you cannot argue against the fact that this was the start of it all you know this 18 year old franchise that we've been playing is part of our gaming childhood or whatever whatever the call of duty franchise means to you this is what started it all so I would love to have been able to rate this one, but I haven't played it, so we're going to stay true to this and say never played. Moving on to Call of Duty 2. Now, I did own Call of Duty 2, the big red one, but again, I would have been 9, 8 or 9, so I have played this. I don't really have much memory of playing it, but it did make me buy Call of Duty 3, so it must have been good, but I'm not going to rate it. I'm going to stay true to this ranking system, and we're going to put it on never played. So that's the first two quickly out of the way. Call of Duty and Call of Duty 2. Very, very good games according to the magazines, the websites that have rated it. But I personally haven't played them, so I can't give my opinion on them. But Call of Duty 3, I have definitely played that one. 2006, Treyarch release Call of Duty 3. World War 2 first person shooter. Now just quickly speaking, Call of Duty 3 did have an online experience. It did have a multiplayer, but it was very, very simple. And you can't blame them. It was 2006. You know, this is still early stages for multiplayer games online, especially on consoles. So it wasn't that great of experience from what I can remember. It was very simple. You know, it was very, very kind of low resolution very polygony kind of you know that stuff so for me call of duty 3 was all about the campaign and the campaign did deliver it was 14 missions very very good it was all different styles american british canadian polish there was all different campaign storylines there and some of them are iconic you know i would love to go back and play the call of duty 3 which i might do i might download it on pc go back record it do a summary like i did for black ops call of duty 3 was a very very good game and i think it's kind of started the ball rolling for the call of duty franchise ever since call of duty 3 was released and i played it i haven't stopped playing call of duty i've played every single one since so it must have done something it must have been good so for me call of duty 3 is going in the great section mainly because the multiplayer was you know comparing it to today's standard it, you can't you cannot compare call of duty 3's multiplayer to today's standard but it was still a very very good game so moving on the year is 2007 a very very good year for gaming but infinity ward decided to release call of duty 4 modern warfare and boy does that change the game for good the whole gaming industry stopped to have a look at what was going on in the call of duty franchise it became the best selling game of the year with 7 million copies sold in 2007 alone and then by mid 2008 10 million copies of the game had been sold and to be the best selling game of 2007 that is no easy feat that is no easy feat at all some of the games that released in 2007 include mass effect bioshock Uncharted, Halo 3, Assassin's Creed, God of War 2, The Witcher, Spider-Man, Portal. These are all games that came out in 2007. But Call of Duty 4 rose to the top and became the best-selling game of the year. And there are reasons for that. The campaign was good. The campaign was very, very good. They set the bar in Call of Duty 3. We knew Call of Duty, the developers. I know it was Treyarch, then Infinity Ward. But we knew they were good at making campaigns. So it was almost expected 
This game changed the way that games are played now. Games are made now. The content that gets put up on YouTube, you know, you could argue that most of the content creators, the big ones, the ones that have been on the platform for a long time, started with Call of Duty 4. It's, it's just iconic. There's so much to talk about with Call of Duty 4. I don't even know where to start. Not brush it under the carpet, but let's just move away from the campaign side of things because the campaign was fantastic. You know, don't get me wrong. Some of the missions in the campaign, the introduction of Captain Price, Soap, you know, those SAS storylines, they are fantastic. But let's talk about the online experience because that is really what got the game sales in the end. That revolutionary online experience. And when I start reeling off some of the maps that come from this game, we can kind of get an idea on why it was one of the best Call of Duties they've ever made. We've got Shipment, which has been a staple in Call of Duty games ever since it was released. Crash, which has been brought back multiple times. Crossfire, Strike, Overgrown, Vacant, Block. People don't like Block, but I quite liked it. It was a very, very good sniper map. Wet Work. Downpour, Crossfire, I've already said I've already said Crossfire, that's how excited I am. Pipeline, I love Pipeline, I don't know why they didn't bring that back in uh, the remastered version of the game. But those are fantastic maps, and when you start thinking of the guns, these are the guns that we are still using now. The MP5, the M4, the M16, and these are guns that are viable in Warzone. I know there's only a certain amount of guns that you can use because it's based on real life. These are iconic. We've been using the same guns for years and years and years. So before we rank Modern Warfare, this tier maker didn't have seven rows. It had six. I had to add another one. The GOAT. The greatest of all time. And there's only one game that can fit into this category. Only one. And for me, it's Modern Warfare. Easy. I don't even have to think about it. For me, Modern Warfare is the greatest Call of Duty that has ever been made. One, because of the online experience, the campaign was good, but it paved the way for everything else. Everything that everything good that has come from the Call of Duty franchise came from Modern Warfare. The guns, the maps, the experience, the engines, the way it played, the way people played it. The game battles, the competitiveness of Call of Duty, these are all things that came from Modern Warfare. And for me, it's the, it's the greatest. It is the greatest game they've ever made, and it's one of the greatest games ever made. And if you don't agree, let me know down in the comments below. Let me know why you don't agree. Moving on, we've got Call of Duty World at War. So, the year is now 2008, and Treyarch have released their first game since Call of Duty 3. So they set the bar quite high as far as the campaign side goes, and they definitely, definitely delivered with Call of Duty World at War. I've been thinking about replaying this and doing a video on it, you know, just kind of sum up the campaign. And why? Because... It's probably one of my favorite Call of Duty campaigns, especially one of the early Call of Duty campaigns. It's very, very good. It's very strong. And there was a decent amount of content to get through. But the campaign, you know, again, like Modern Warfare, let's kind of put it to one side because what got the game the sales again was the online experience. Now, I know people do have kind of a mixed review of World at War. It was nothing like Modern Warfare. The same elements that Modern Warfare brought and revolutionized, you know, the perk picking system, the guns, that was there. The core elements of a Call of Duty game was there, but with a Treyarch spin. And that's not that bad, you know, I've always felt that Treyarch were maybe slightly behind on the engine side of things, and you can definitely tell that from Modern Warfare and Call of Duty 5 World of War. It does kind of feel like Modern Warfare should be later, as, as in released later, because it was kind of more advanced than World at War was. And it's kind of the same story now, that Modern Warfare is still kind of more advanced than Cold War. You know, the engine's better. The game plays a little bit more smoothly. It feels like there's been a little bit more TLC given to it compared to the Treyarch side of things. And you can tell that, and it's still like that today. I suppose it's just different developers and their spin on things, but I feel like, you know, the Modern Warfare engine compared to the World at War engine it was, it was a bit iffy. Very, very good sides to World at War. You know, the maps were fantastic. You have Castle, Airfield, Dome. These are all fantastic maps. And I would still argue to this day that Castle is my favourite Call of Duty map of all time. That map was crazy how good that map was. I'll put some images up on screen for you guys of that map if you haven't played it. I would love to see that map return. They probably won't. 
you know, they probably won't bring it back. But wow, what a fantastic map that was. If we're talking about World of War, we have to mention that tiny little Easter egg at the end of the campaign. And what's, what you what you want about KKC? There wasn't an Easter egg. Zombies. Call of Duty World at War was the first installment of the zombie side of Call of Duty, which probably these days could be a standalone game. It's that big now, there's so many players playing it, there's such a large zombie fan base that they could just make a Call of Duty Zombies game. You know, Warzone, 6v6 game, and then Zombies. That would be fine, I think that would flow fine. You know, Knack the Totem wasn't, you know, compared to today's standards, very simple. There was no perks, there was only guns you could buy off the wall and through the box, there was no upgrading. Very, very simple. But again, like all of these good Call of Duty games, the simplicity of it was the best part of it. I don't know how long this video is going to be because as the games progress, they get more and more complex and there's so many more things to talk about. This is going to take forever, but World of War, simple, hard hitting, fantastic game. And for me, that's going in the God tier. It's definitely going in the God tier. Can't be GOAT. If something knocked off the Modern Warfare, I'll be surprised. Call of Duty World at War, for me, was a God tier Call of Duty. So moving on now to possibly the most iconic Call of Duty game that's ever been made, apart from Modern Warfare. We have the sequel, Infinity Ward, released in 2009, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Now this just sends shivers down my spine. The amount of times I must have said Modern Warfare 2 in my life, I would love to see the count because it's a lot. It'll be a lot. So where do we start? The campaign was good. The campaign was good. It felt like a continuation on from Modern Warfare, but it didn't feel like they'd had two years to work on it. It kind of felt like they just carried on. But we got to talk about the online experience. So Modern Warfare 2 only really released with multiplayer and campaign. There wasn't really anything else, apart from the, the spec ops side of it. But the multiplayer experience was one of the best Call of Duty online experiences they have ever done. Ever. I think a good place to start is the map. So when I start listing off some of the maps, you kind of get an idea on why this game was so highly rated. You have Estate, High Rise, Quarry, Rust, Terminal, Wasteland. You know, these are all games. Scrapyard. These maps are still around today. Scrapyard is in the Warzone map. They're very good. There were some that I didn't prefer, but if you gave me a choice of these maps against any Cold War map, I would choose any of the Modern Warfare 2 maps because they're all so good. There are large ones, you know, which were a little bit slow for 6v6. You know, playing trying to play Derail on 6v6 would have been slow as fuck, but playing Ground War, fantastic. And again, like I said with Call of Duty 4, Modern Warfare 2 really sort of paved the way for content creation. The way Call of Duty's after this were made, it kind of set the scene. It built upon what came in Modern Warfare, you know, the perk picking system, the attachments, all of the guns. It was all there. The ingredients for one of the greatest Call of Duty games was just there. You know, that's not to say it wasn't cheesy on times. You know, you had the one-man army grenade launcher thing going on for a while. You had the 1v1 tactical insertion boosting going on for a while. You know, if they remastered Modern Warfare 2, which I don't know why they haven't, by the way, they would have to tweak a few things. They wouldn't have to tweak a lot, but they would have to tweak a few things. So Modern Warfare 2 is going in the god tier of the Call of Duty games. So moving on, we're on to Treyarch's next installment. 2010, they release... Call of Duty Black Ops. Now again, Call of Duty Black Ops, the campaign side of things was revolutionary. I've never played a campaign like that. It was fantastic. The fact that you had this grand 13, 14 missions based purely off transmissions or memories. Guys, if you want to check the Call of Duty campaign for Black Ops out as well, I have got a full video, a full summary on this. It's about half an hour long. I go through every single mission. I break down what happens and why and then we sum up what happened in the whole story if you want to check that video out, i will leave a link to it down below in the comments and in the bio as well but what a fantastic campaign but again the multi we're all about multiplayer here the multiplayer experience was on another level another level and black ops introduced so many different things into the call of duty franchise we had the kind of uh, creator class 2.0, where you had complete personalization on what you could do. You had the emblems, the calling cards, you had the face paints. 
camos, reticles, you had everything so you didn't look like the player you've just killed or the next player on your team. It was completely personalized. And then what else did it introduce? It had COD points or the COD currency, which was a good side of things because you had the wager matches and you could actually play for the currency. And then what else did it introduce? Nuketown, firing range, summit, grid, radiation. These are all fantastic Call of Duty maps that have gone down in history, all come from this game. So there's plenty to talk about with Black Ops, especially with the multiplayer, but we also have to mention the and we also have to mention the zombies. Again, the zombies for Black Ops was just a continuation, a fantastic continuation, should I say, on what World of War did. Treyarch, Treyarch know how to make a campaign and they know how to make a zombies game. It started off with Kino, the Tota, and then we had five. We had the introduction of the Dead Ops Arcade. And then further down the line, we had Ascension, Call of the Dead, Shangri-La, and Moon. You know, these are fantastic, iconic Call of Duty Black Ops zombies maps. And there is a reason why Call of Duty Black Ops is justifiably a god tier Call of Duty game. So moving on now, the year is now 2011. The Infinity Ward and Sledgehammer Games release Modern Warfare 3. So Modern Warfare 3, where do I stand with this? Campaign was okay, nothing memorable though. For me, I kind of felt like they, they pushed it too far. And they kind of squeezed it out, if that makes sense. Kind of felt a little bit forced. But this is my opinion, of course. It felt a little bit forced. Like it just, yeah, let's do another one for money sake. Can't really, I don't want to speak about the campaign too much because, you know, it's not very memorable. What about the multiplayer side of things? Again, the multiplayer released with 16 maps. You know, Resistance was good. The French one, that, that's pretty iconic. A lot of them weren't that good. Dome was good. The maps on Modern Warfare 3 kind of took a, a bit of a hit. I'm not going to lie. I just, I don't know. I feel like Modern Warfare 3 was kind of a rushed, kind of put together quickly. The engine was slightly different. Didn't have that Modern Warfare 2 feel about it. They changed a lot of things with the leveling system. There was now like 80 ranks and a prestige shop. And But Modern Warfare 3 for me was just kind of a bit of a, a money grabbing squeeze. Modern Warfare 3, let's go all right. Modern Warfare 3 was all right. I played it plenty. You know, I must have played it for a good reason. Modern Warfare 3, it was okay. It was okay. It is a Modern Warfare game at the end of the day. So what I just said about Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3 is they didn't feel like the same game, really. You know, Sledgehammer were involved, kind of tweaked it a little bit. It didn't quite have that same feel. Black Ops 2 was Black Ops 1 sequel, 100 percent you could just tell this game was a good continuation on from where the game was at the end of black ops 1 cycle the campaign was good wasn't as good as black ops 1 again not as memorable possibly i think that's probably the best way to put it but the multiplayer experience was a very good you know these three maps have all been brought back in call of duty 2020 we got hijacked standoff and raid i think rush is meant to be coming as well so that's four of the top maps from black ops 2 have all been remastered remade we've also got maps like overflow plaza express that's another one that's come back nuketown 2025 the return of nuketown black ops 2 online was very very good it wasn't bad it wasn't as good as black ops 1 i don't think but black ops 2 yeah that's a serious game I don't know where to put this. I don't know whether to put it in the God tier or the Great tier. I'm going to put Black Ops 2 in the Great tier for now. But then again, I say Great. We haven't spoken about the zombie side of things. And it had Transit, you know, Mob of the Dead. I'll, nah, it's going in Great. It's going in God. It's going in God. Black Ops 2 was a God Call of Duty game. End of. So moving on to Infinity Ward's darker time, shall we say. Call of Duty Ghosts. So swiftly moving on, we're going to Sledgehammer's 2014 Call of Duty game, Advanced Warfare. Do we have to talk about it anymore? It sucked. Exo zombies, exo suits. What? what were they thinking? What were they thinking? Supply drops. Trash. Trash, trash, trash. I don't even want to speak about it. So moving on to a Black Ops 3. So Black Ops 3 took the advanced movement and made it okay. That's what happened. I don't think Treyarch did a very good job with the the whole futuristic side of things. You know, Black Ops, Black Ops 2, they were good, but I think 
when, once they went once they hit that future mark it dropped off a little bit the storytelling wasn't that memorable i think is the lowest rated black ops game out of the four number three but let's just move on to the multiplayer so the multiplayer the specialists were okay i think that's an okay addition to the game i i'm glad it hasn't really made a made a prominent return in the franchise it was okay we we had the pick 10 system returning from black ops 2 which again is revolutionary that is an absolute must now an absolute must for call of duty games they made the most of the wall running and the jetpacks they they did make the most of that and it wasn't as bad as it was in advanced warfare and some of the maps are very good we have fringe we have combine the maps let's just try out baby the maps were good black ops 3 is going in great i don't think it tips the god tier the zombies was also very good we had shadows of evil and then we had the giant and then we had black ops 3 brought the chronicles which pretty much was just zombies remastered the whole zombie or zombies online whatever way you want to look at it, it had all the zombies maps on so i think i think for that reason as well the zombies needs to go in the great side of things so i think if the campaign was better call of duty black ops 3 had the potential to be a god tier game it definitely had the potential but i think the campaign you know looking at it at a whole the campaign let it down a little bit so moving on now we're getting closer to you know today infinity ward release call of duty infinite warfare in 2016. they knew this game sucked they knew it was shit. they knew what they'd made they knew what they had the game was whack so what did they do they brought out call of duty modern warfare remastered that is not on this list so we're just gonna disregard that because if you want to include modern warfare remastered in infinity warfare it pushes it up a little bit higher than where it should be call of duty infinite warfare whatever i was calling it infinite warfare was trash it was so bad the cycle's over it's 2017 sledgehammer are now releasing their second installment or their second solo installment shall i say and they bring us world war ii i personally didn't mind it it had some good elements let's get the campaign out the way the campaign was hard hitting you know it really made use of the graphics they had at the time i think it was well put together it wasn't the greatest story it was a little bit cringy in parts but they listened to the fans that what that's what was what was good about world war ii is they listened to the fans the fans wanted boots on the ground so they had to pull something together they had to make something that was boots on the ground and they made world war ii so i think we forked off in the right direction with world war ii world war ii was all right do you know what no world war ii for me for me personally it was great it was a great call of duty because i was ready to give up with call of duty advanced warfare infinite warfare i was ready to give up but world war ii did kind of bring it back down for me the campaign was okay the zombie side of it was subpar it was subpar there wasn't loads to do i didn't enjoy it that much i didn't play zombies on that game that much but the multiplayer side of things i loved i did enjoy world war ii multiplayer i think i got to eighth prestige on it i was playing the game a fair amount i did know exactly what was going on the maps the maps were okay the maps have stayed with me i can remember playing this game quite vividly and i think although the, the kind of you know loot box supply drop was in this game they kind of did it okay where it didn't change the guns itself it was just skins it was cosmetic whereas in infinite warfare advanced warfare you know they, they were game changing things that you could get in boxes more powerful versions of the guns whereas world war ii it was mostly cosmetic so for that reason it's great because it was a step in the right direction and i think without world war ii we could have gone on this wild roller coaster of shit advanced movement call of duty games so for me it was great we're into three years of ourselves here we're on to the big boy games now what well, i'd like to say the big boy games let's talk about black ops 4 2018 treyarch release the fourth installment of the black ops series we can't talk about the campaign because black ops 4 released without one so we can't discuss there all we can talk about is multiplayer and zombies so again set in the future multiplayer we see the return of the specialists i don't know it didn't quite have what black ops 3 had but what was good you know we had the pick 10 system we had all the, the good elements of the call of duty franchise and where it was at the time but i feel like it was too late for them to get rid of the 
advanced movement by this point. We cried and cried out for boots on the ground, and I think Black Ops 4 was too far in the making now to kind of stop, so they had to finish it. Black Ops 4 was kind of, okay, thank God, this is the end of it now. The maps were okay, there's nothing that stands out to me in my mind, and Blackout, <sighs> Blackout, it was an attempt. They had the right idea, it was an attempt, but it didn't work. Unfortunately, Blackout for me was dreadful. I thought it was rubbish. I thought there was far better Battle Royale games that you could be playing at the time. I think the zombie side of things wasn't great either. I don't know whether I don't know what the consensus of the Black Ops 4, you know, zombie community is, but you had, you know, the sort of the Roman one, I think it was. The Voyage of Despair, the Blood of the It was a bit iffy. It was a bit iffy. I think Black Ops 4, a little bit like Modern Warfare 3, they, they pushed it too far, in my opinion. They didn't really know what to do, they made another one, they panicked because no one wanted the exosuits and the advanced movement, so they toned it down a lot. Multiplayer didn't quite play right then because of the toning down they had to do. There was no campaign, the zombies was complicated and hard to do, and for me, Black Ops 4 was alright. It was all right. Where are we now? We are now in 2019 and Infinity Ward drop Modern Warfare. Standalone 6v6 game. I'm gonna put the game as all right. Is it great or is it all right? All we're talking about here is standalone. It's great. I enjoyed the campaign. I thought the campaign was good and I liked the boots on the ground, we're back to the normal, setting the scene for what's to come in the next couple of years. Don't like the name, they could have named it anything they wanted to and they name it the same as the OG. Don't know why they did that, that is one of my pet hates. I think the maps are good. No, no, hang on a minute, there are some shit maps. It's alright. It's alright. Sorry, guys. I had to think that one through. Modern Warfare as a standalone game is alright. There are a lot. Oh, but it's, it's the gunsmith, though. <laughs> oh, I really don't know. I don't know. Let's go. Modern Warfare is great because you've got the gunsmith. the The multiplayer is okay if you're on the smaller maps. But then, is it as good as Black Ops? Is it as good as? I don't know. They changed a lot. Oh, all right, it's all right. It's all right. I can't even speak about it much longer because I don't know where. I don't know where to put it. That isn't including Warzone, guys. We're gonna have to add our own little box here and add in Warzone. Modern Warfare was all right as a standalone six v six game. So now we're moving on to the final, the most recent relevant Call of Duty game, Black Ops Cold War. What do I think of Black Ops Cold War? It started well. I think it did start well. When me and my friends were playing it in the beta stage, we thought this could be good. This could be really good, but it didn't go any further. The game feels like it's in a beta stage at all time. And as the game gets older and it gets updated, things just aren't going the right way. I think the campaign is good. The campaign is very good. It's the typical Treyarch kind of feel to it. The zombies is also good. They they need more content. You can't just be bringing out these, this onslaught as content. You need another full four-man Call of Duty. It's, it's needed. It is needed. And I think until they release that, it's going to be all right. The multiplayer, it releases with what? Eight maps? Four of them that we played to death in the beta anyway. The rest kind of suck. The skill... Oh, we got to talk about the skill-based matchmaking in this game is unreal. That might be why these two are in the all right section. Because the skill-based matchmaking is insane. It's so strong. So, so strong. I think mod I think Call of Duty... I think Cold War had the potential to be a great Call of Duty game, personally. I do think it had the potential, but it was rushed. Treyarch had to pick up Sledgehammer's mess, or Treyarch had to pick up Raven Software's mess. I don't know. It wasn't that good. It really wasn't that good. And I j recently just released a video saying I won't be playing that game anymore because of the state that it's in. It just feels like it hasn't been finished. That's where it feels like. Is World War II, is it better than Cold War? Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm trying to compare the games that I've put in the all right section compared to the great set. Yeah, Cold War is okay. I'm glad it's coming to an end, and I'm excited for the next installment, the Sledgehammer, Treyarch, Call of Duty Vanguard. I'm excited to see where that goes. We now have to add in our own one. we got to make our own one, Warzone. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I'll probably just make a square and kind of just pop it in. So one minute there'll be nothing, the next minute there'll be Warzone. Where is Warzone? Warzone is a god tier Call of Duty game. Warzone has revolutionized the Call of Duty franchise. And in my opinion, if they just released Cold War without Warzone, and you know, if they released Modern Warfare without Warzone and they hadn't integrated it, Call of Duty's dead, personally. Without this has saved the Call of Duty franchise. Blackout was trash. Their first attempt at a Battle Royale game was trash. And they just got it so right with Warzone. Okay, it's cheesy at times. And they don't update things very quickly. And they're very money grabbing. I understand that. But Warzone, yeah. It's God tier. It is God tier. It's kind of what started me back into the franchise in such a heavy way that I wanted to make content on it. I stopped making content for Call of Duty games after Modern Warfare 2. Because I enjoyed the games and I liked playing them. But I didn't want to actually share what was going on. But this Warzone, man, it's, it's taken the world by storm. Everyone knows the word Warzone. And it's here to stay, guys. It's really here to stay. So, guys, there it is. That is my Call of Duty tier list ranking. Going from the bottom, we have Call of Duty 1 and 2, never played. In the trash section, we have Advanced Warfare and Infinite Warfare. In the meh, we have Ghosts. In the all right, we have Modern Warfare 3, Black Ops 4, Modern Warfare and Cold War. In the great, we have Call of Duty 3, Black Ops 3, and World War 2. In the god tier, we have World at War, Modern Warfare 2, Black Ops, and Black Ops 2. And the greatest Call of Duty game of all time is Call of Duty 4, Modern Warfare. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed my explanation on why these games are ranked where they are, let me know by dropping a like on it down below. Let me know your ranking in the comments as well. I want to see every single game in order. Let me know what you think of the Call of Duty franchise as a whole. Is Warzone the greatest of all time? That's the question I want answered in the comments. And as always, guys, thank you for staying tuned until the very end of the video. It's probably going to be a long one, this one, so I appreciate anyone who has watched right until the end. Guys, as always, feel free to subscribe to the channel for all of the latest Call of Duty news, tips and tricks, how-tos, class setups, and much more.